Hey everyone, Sarah Picaro. Uh, today's video is going to be talking about a different, almost a different angle of codependency, because you probably, if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, have learned about your own codependency, and maybe you've read books like Melody Beattie's Codependent No More, and you're coming to this realization or this understanding or this awareness that you have been codependent. You've shown up as a codependent one in relationships with others. Maybe it's really highly toxic people. Maybe it's narcissists. But the thing is, a narcissist is more codependent than you actually are if you're the other one in that relationship. So the truth about codependency is it's not just about your relationship with others, your engagement, your way of being with others. Codependency actually comes down to the same thing that every com everything comes down to, your relationship with you. That's why doing the in internal inner work to heal has to come from within you. It's an awareness about you, who you are, what, what your way of being is, your, your traits, your tendencies, your attachment styles. So when you're actually in this healing space and you're ready to move forward and take the next step and progress through life in a much more efficient, beneficial way, it has to have nothing to do with the other people in your life with, and what with what others have done to you. It, you have to let go of, well, this person's a narcissist and they did this to me, right? Because then you're staying stuck in that victim mentality. But when you're learning about what got you to that place and what led you to that place and codependency comes up, then you may think, oh, I'm a codependent. And there are groups out there that, you know, can can highlight more around this, like CODA, Codependence Anonymous, right? And, and not that those are, are bad groups, but what I've heard from many, many people that I've worked with, actually people who've been in that program for a very, very long time, is that it, it can be difficult to find a healthy group. There are so many things that say they will help out there, but they end up doing more harm than good because of maybe the way that they're ran or maybe your perception or your involvement with them. And that's this very same thing with codependency. You want to say, well, I'm codependent and this person did this to me, but that gets you stuck and it, and it can keep you trapped. What codependency really and truly is, is your relationship with yourself. Although codependency generally manifests and shows up as, you know, people pleasing, caretaking, always doing more for others than you do for yourself, over giving and have a, a very small stream of receiving, if anything at all. At its core, what it stems from is a disconnection. So you're disconnected from the relationship that you have with yourself, disconnected from self. Therefore, you're, you're dependent on other people to fill that internal or inner void. And beneath this codependent uh, foundation and these actions and these thoughts and these patterns and these behaviors and these beliefs is a, a really janky, wonky foundation. It's a foundation that's crumbling. And for many codependent people, being alone with yourself it shoots off massive sparks of anxiety, of worry. And so you're busy, 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 busy all the time to avoid being with yourself. Therefore, the codependent, right? You become enmeshed and, and dependent on others to avoid being with yourself. And solitude, the fear of being alone, really weighs heavy on you. It really comes into play, the solidarity, right? It means coming face to face with your own shame, looking in the mirror and seeing your own self-judgment, your own inner critical negative voice, or that you're a perfectionist and everything has to be perfect. And so you will easily, effortlessly, without a thought, abandon yourself so that you can be a part of someone else's life and, and be a part of them feeling joy, happiness, and, and love. And you'll even go to the extent of getting involved in someone else's life when those things are, are lacking or not present at all. And when there's just drama, when there's just problems, that's okay. Because that in and of itself is a distraction from you having to face your own internal stuff you know, feelings of not being good enough, uh, not perfect. And so you will happily and eagerly abandon yourself to go get involved in someone else's drama. That's really what's at the core of codependency. And when it comes to healing codependency or stopping codependent behaviors in a relationship, it's only part of it. It's only a couple pieces of the puzzle. And in fact, you, 
it wouldn't even be beneficial to stop all of the codependent behaviors because we need relationships, we need connection in order to feel whole and feel complete. So if you want to completely stop all the codependency in your life, it, there's a part of you that won't allow that because you need that in order to survive and thrive. So you don't heal by simply just saying, oh, I'm not going to fix people anymore. They're monkeys, they're problems, like they're, uh, that I'm not going to take care of people anymore or please other people. There's a, a part of us that really feels connected to that. And those are those higher vibrations of love and compassion and empathy. So you can't fix those things. In fact, the very lack of those is what makes you feel off balance. And people just want a normal, normal, balanced, happy, healthy life. So you can't heal by saying, well, I'm just not going to fix other people. I'm not going to please other people. Because a part of our happiness is when others are, are happy with us, right? And you can have that relationship. But you also must strengthen your relationship with yourself in order to get that and to not have it be something that's a detriment to you. You've got to be your own best friend and befriend yourself. And some people would never, ever, ever say the, the horrible things that they say to themselves to their best friends. And they talk to themselves like that all the time, that inner voice, that inner critic that's always judging and always shaming and always blaming you and always cutting and putting you down. Well, you've got to heal that part of you. And you can begin that process with awareness by honoring and by meeting your basic needs and by spending time in exercises and with activities that bring you pleasure. And But a lot of people struggle there because they feel selfish or guilty doing that. So it's a lot easier said than done until you've done the internal work. Uh, and being able to be with all of your emotions, not just the good ones or not just the bad ones, to be able to be with all of them because all of them are you and all of them do have their place and a purpose in your life. So to cut out or get rid of some of those feelings like anger, guilt, regret, you, you should actually have those because that's an awareness that you're off track or you're doing something wrong. If you're hurting someone and you don't have, feel guilt, well, you would just continue to go on and hurt that person. And if you're a kind, caring, loving person, you want the guilt because it, it kind of is a, a meter and a gauge and a measurement of where you are and, and where the health of your relationship with yourself and with others is. So by being with that, honoring those spaces within you, that's what you can do to heal. But a lot of people even struggle to know where to start or where to begin. So uh, just begin by becoming aware that codependency is actually way more to do with you than it is to do with your relationship with other people. It's much more to do with your relationship that you have with yourself or the lack of because you put all your eggs in other people's baskets and then they're just running off with them and you're left feeling, well, I have no eggs now. Hmm. So if you want and desire to feel at ease and at peace, within your heart, within your mind, within your body, and to have the physical manifestations and representations of what's going on internally be ones of pleasure, then you've got to be, be get, um, begin to, to do the inner work and to come home to this place where you feel grounded within yourself and, and not always be looking to go out there and have someone else fix you or take care of you or, or you be that person for others constantly because then you lose yourself then you probably hear that metaphor you're trying to pour from an empty cup so that's actually what's at the core of codependency and if all the things that you've done to try and heal those parts of you or fix those parts of you i don't even like the word fix because it indicates that something's broken it may not be broken it's as if you have the parts that are there but they're not syncing up and and connecting in the way that has them work to be a benefit in your life so if the parts are there, but they're not working together the way that they're designed to, it's going to feel like it's a detriment to your life. And it's going to feel like it's something that's more work to do. So actually, you get a lot more with doing less. But in order to shift that perspective and understanding it down, you've got to use the resources that you already have. But it may feel like they're locked off or or boxed away and then put somewhere and you, you can't access them. That's because they're in your inner mind or your unconscious mind or subconscious mind. All of those three words can be used interchangeably, 
to mean and speak to the same thing. And that's the very thing that hypnosis and rapid transformational therapy allows you to get to, to unlock those resources that you do have within you. They're not gonna be found in a podcast or a book. Those these can be uh, part of the awareness and the understanding that they're locked off for you, but they're not gonna gain, gain you access to them for you because what works for one person may not work for another person. And that may be part of the reason why you feel so locked up and so frustrated because this person just went off and did this and then everything in their life changed and they told me to go do that and I did and still nothing has changed. So if you're in that space and you still feel stuck there, you hate being in that space and you don't know what to do to get out of it, then maybe something like you know, going on a journey using hypnosis and using the power of your unconscious mind will be the very key, this thing in a little necklace, the very key that unlocks that for you so that you can go on having a healthy, incredible relationship with yourself so that you can therefore have a healthy and incredible relationship with others. If you're missing the key and that's what you're looking for and you've tried looking for it in a million other places and no matter where you look, you can't seem to find it, but you know that this is what you need to unlock that incredible life that you want and desire to have waiting for you, then let's connect. Then I invite you to click on the link in the description of this video and schedule time for us to connect and talk more about working together one-on-one -on -one to do just that. And while you're there, take a look at what other people have said about working together and the fast and effective way that they can most incredible, phenomenal results. So thank you guys. Remember that you do have everything that you need inside of you. It just may be locked away somewhere so we can get it unlocked for you very quickly.